Hello there, good evening and a warm welcome. This is Rupa Vahini News. Hello there, I'm Daphne Charles. And I'm in Raja Surya. We start off with a look at the headlines for tonight. Northern Province records the highest number of students qualified to enter universities. Scholars and professionals who left the country during the period of war invited to return to the motherland. Countrywide food outlet inspection gets underway. A special operation now on to evict South Sudanese rebels. On to those and other stories in detail now. Students who came first in various study streams at the GC Advanced Level Examination called on President Mahindra Rajapaksa Temple Trees in Colombo this morning. Amaya Tatsarani of Ehaliagoda Madhya Mahavidyalaya, who came first in the Biological Science stream, Aditya Virasiri Dias of Richmond College Gaul, who gained the first place in Physical Science stream, Erandani Kanchana of Gampaha Ratnavali Vidyalaya, who came first in the Commerce stream, Metsarani Lokuge of Devi Balika Vidyalaya Colombo, who received best results in the Art stream, and Dunisha Tarangi Fernando of Musius College Colombo, who gained first place in the Information Technology stream, met the President today. Congratulating the students who excelled at the GC Advanced Level Examination, President Rajapaksa extended his blessings to them for their future success in further education. He advised them to become a group of persons useful to the country, protecting the dignity of the motherland and committing themselves to fulfill aspirations of their parents. Children in the north have come forward in education as a result of the dawning peace in the area, ending terrorism. Education Minister Bandula Gunavadana disclosed that the north has become the major province where the highest number of students have qualified from the advanced level examination to enter universities. Minister Bandula Gunavadana noted that the Sabaragamo province recorded the second best results at the GC advanced level examination and the eastern province was placed third. The north and east provinces were affected by war. Children in these areas had to wear cyanide capsules around their neck for three decades, neglecting their books. 83 Mahindodia schools will be built in the north central province, 90 in the northern province and 103 in the eastern province. Students in the north will get more facilities than the south, he said. <laughs> One hundred thousand rupee checks were presented to students who received best results with the sponsorship of People's Bank. They were also presented with laptops and dictionaries. Deputy Minister Mohan Dal Grayrod, Chairman of the People's Bank and Chief of President Staff Garmini Senarat, school principals and parents were among those present at the ceremony. In the meantime, the health ministry says that 99% of 150 food outlets which came under inspection in Maradan area of Colombo offered unhygienic food items. Inspections on food outlets which began today will be continued during the next five days countrywide. The aim is to crack down on errant traders who are selling food items unsuitable for human consumption. Inspection is being carried out in food production, distribution and selling places throughout the island. Information has been received by the Health Ministry that certain persons are distributing food items without considering hygienic conditions and food safety. The inspection of food outlets began from Maradan area today. This is a joint program of the Health Ministry, Consumer Affairs Authority and Community Health Department of the Colombo Municipal Council. It has been confirmed during today's inspection that roti pieces which were kept for weeks had been used to prepare kotto roti. The oil used to prepare food items such as dried fish, fish, Chinese rolls, papadam are used to make chili paste after using it for several weeks. Certain traders had used weeks old perished gram to prepare murukku. It has also been confirmed that fruits used to prepare fruit juice and fruit salad are contaminated with fungi. The so Health Ministry appeals to the people to make complaints on such certain traders by contacting telephone number 0113 or zero double one two six seven six one six one or one nine double seven. Health Services Director General Dr. Palita Mahi Palas said that the special message he is giving to the public is to pay attention cautiously on food outlets. They should consume only food items from good hotels, bakeries, and restaurants. 
The bodies of two miners who were trapped underground in a gem mine that collapsed in Angam and Aratnapura have been recovered. The accident took place at the gem mine 30 feet deep yesterday. Twelve miners were in the mine at the time of the incident. The two deceased have been identified as residents of Palmadulla and Alapata areas. The police suspect that the mine may have collapsed due to water that has seeped from a hole from a nearby old gem mine which was completely closed down. The bodies were recovered last night in a search operation conducted jointly by Ratnapura Police, the Fire Brigade of the Municipal Council and area residents. Ratnapura Police are conducting further investigations. Defence and Urban Development Ministry Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksha extends an invitation to scholars and professionals who left the country during the period of instability in Sri Lanka to return to the motherland. He made this appeal when he addressed the 2013 Working Sri Lanka Conference in Colombo today. Special attention was focused on action that should be followed by foreigners as well as Sri Lankans who left the country for greener pastures. When returning to the island and afterwards, measures should be taken to create awareness on the living standard, education, security and economic standard. The conference was chaired by Defence Secretary Gotabe Rajapaksha with the Sri Lanka Central Bank Governor Ajit Nivad Cabral, foreign representatives and officials in attendance. One of the primary reasons uh, for the successes of local businesses in various fields is the very high quality of Sri Lanka's human capital. Sri Lankan schools and universities produce smart and hard-working professionals in large number of sectors. These individuals have excelled in their chosen fields both in Sri Lanka and abroad. Due to the uncertain situation that prevailed in the country from the 1980s until 2009. However, many of our best and brightest left Sri Lanka to see greener pastures in other countries. Whether these individuals left to escape the conflict or pursue higher education, obtain more lucrative employment or enjoy a better quality of life, their departures was a serious loss to the nation. Now that Sri Lanka has overcome the problems it faced in the past and is poised for rapid equitable growth, the time is ripe for expatriate Sri Lankans from all communities to consider coming back home. Minister Vimal Veeravansu says that the motherland, protected at the risk of lives, cannot be surrendered to conspiratorial powers. He accused the United National Party, which failed to respect the national anthem, at their convention for supporting unpatriotic powers. Minister of Construction, Engineering Services, Housing and Common Amenities, Vimal Veeravansu noted that leaders of the UNP were seen groaning at their convention recently. Ranul Vikramasinghe has made his speech after halting of the national anthem. He behaved in an unrespectful manner during the playing of the national anthem. This shows their attitude to the country. He asked how such leaders would protect the motherland and move it forward without surrendering it at, to conspiratorial powers. On the other hand, the Tamil National Alliance says that they are not hoisting the national flag. Not a single un opposition MP had criticized this statement. He asked whether the national flag did not belong to the opposition. Another phase of the Sassan N7 financial assistance program for housing being implemented to coincide with the Jana 7 a 1 million housing program was heard in Colombo today. A sum of 100,000 rupees each was presented to 100, 114 low income families in the Colombo district. 32 families selected from the public day of the minister were among them. Addressing the gathering, Minister Vimal Viravansa has pledged to provide fully-fledged new housing units to around 20,000 shanty dwellers living in the Kalamba Municipal Council area.
He added that these benefits will be provided to people without proper shelter facilities. He added that these people were selected without considering their party politics. Western Province Provincial Councillor Jagat Kumara, Deputy Mayor of Kaduvela Municipal Council, Buddhika Javila, Secretary to the Ministry of Construction, Engineering Services, Housing and Common Amenities, Vim Vimala Siri Pereira, and the General Manager of the National Housing Development Authority, Brigadier Mahinda Mudalige, were present. Investigations into skeletal bones of persons recovered during a construction project at Kovila Road in Tirukoneshwaram Banna are now underway. Anuradhapura Judicial Medical Officer Dr. A. Y. Diratna began the inquiry this evening. A group of workers engaged in a project to lay a network of pipes on Kovila Road in Tirukoneshwaram Banna have found human skeletons and bones of the 21st of this month. It was suspected as a mass grave and a 25-cent coin belonging to the year 1982 was found from the site. This area was controlled by the LTTE till the year 2007 and the excavation at the site began yesterday. The Dean of the Karapitiya Judicial Medical Faculty Specialist, Dr. ULP Pereira, appealed to the people to extend their support to identify skeletons of persons who had died in the tsunami disaster in 2004. These skeletal remains were found around March in 2005. The skeletal remains were found in Hikkadua, Peralia, Telvatta and Kahave areas. It could be identified using DNA tests. Relatives are required to come forward to, for identification. Parts of clothes, railway identity cards and spectacles have also been recovered along with these skeletons. They have been packed and conserved in separate boxes. But the lack of adequate number of boxes had become a problem. 138 UN, uh, rather 138 bodies were placed at the Karapitiya Medical Faculty, official sources said. Christians countrywide are preparing to celebrate Christmas, the birth of the Prince of Peace, the Lord Jesus Christ. According to Christian history, Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem on Christmas Day. Christian devotees believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was the Prince of Peace who brought the message of love and compassion to the whole world. Christmas, the day of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ, is celebrated worldwide on a grand scale. Christmas zones have been established in several areas in the island. Christian devotees in the northeast are also preparing to celebrate Christmas in a meaningful manner. Christmas ceremonies will be organized at all churches and Christmas masses, carol prayer recitals and benevolent activities will be amongst them. Many towns and shops are being filled with shoppers during the Christmas festive period. They have been given an opportunity to purchase essential items at reasonable prices. Shoppers said that this Christmas is different from previous ones because they can visit towns to purchase goods without fear or suspicion. Many items are cheap and therefore they can celebrate Christmas happily and peacefully, several shoppers said. Reverend Father Benedict Joseph, who is the National Director in charge of the Catholic Mass Communication Activities, noted that taking action to spread love and compassion to the whole world depicts the true meaning of Christmas. He added that Christmas is a family festival. It is centered on disciplined family with good qualities. He called upon everyone to live with tolerance and pardon the wrongdoings of others. Everyone who should inculcate the better conduct with discipline amongst themselves. It is essential to identify happiness and the true meaning of Christmas he said. Now, while people all over the world are preparing in great haste to celebrate Christmas, a number of world-renowned artists join together to wish their viewers on behalf of Christmas. Film artists Daniel Radcliffe, Jeremy Renner and Emma Thompson, who have won the hearts of the people world over, and vocalists Sai, Enrique Iglesias and Jason Dorello joined in wishing their fans. Give more, take less. Hi, I'm Dan Abatow, and my message for the holidays is don't hurt anybody. Leave them alone. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. <gasps> hey, it's Harry Connick Jr. Have a great holiday. Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas, whatever it may be. Happy holidays, man. Get home safe. I wish you all a happy holiday. 
Um, have a peaceful holiday. Don't drink and drive. Don't text and drive. Merry Christmas. Peace and love. And, uh, and spend time with your family and hold those people closest to you and hold them dear. Well, just have a great Christmas, you know. Um, uh, may your Christmases be... It's Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Uh, I'd like to send this Christmas message to my fan. Um, happy Christmas, mate. <laughs> happy Christmas to everyone out there. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody, uh, and enjoy this time with your families. Happy holidays, happy Christmas, and a big kiss from Victoria's Secret. Hi! I hope you have a beautiful, beautiful holiday season. Uh, love somebody's and forgive somebody. And just enjoy this moment that we all have together. Happy holidays! From Jim Fulton. Happy holidays! Uh, hello, it's Martin Freeman here. I'd just like to say happy holidays, everyone. Well, happy holidays, everybody. Hope you have a great one. I hope everyone has a lovely holiday. Happy holidays. Happy holidays, and I hope you enjoy the film. Hey, we're, we're Paramore. Paramore. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy New Year. All of it. We love you. Everything. Bye. Bye. Happy New Year. Wow, it's the 12th of July. In 2013, Shine and Dream Girl, everybody has been doing a lot of work. Yes. The meantime, Christians world over preparing to celebrate Christmas, Christmas decorations and various ceremonies were in place in all countries. Indonesians geared up to welcome the Christmas and New Year holidays while police launched massive security operations in the country. Outside the mall, a giant 38 meter Christmas tree made up of LED lights towers over the shoppers. With Christmas just a couple of days away, India reveals in the festivities as hundreds of Christians in India's eastern West Bengal province take out a colorful procession singing carols and spreading the message of peace and compassion. Winkling lights, bustling holiday markets and elaborate window displays light up Paris this Christmas. Parisians and foreigners alike bubble with cheer despite a tough economy. The 105th Christmas Boat Parade got underway in Newport Beach, California. Boats ranging from multi-million dollar yachts to the humble kayaks were decked out in lights and parading around the harbor. Hey on Typhoon survivors in the Philippines craft Christmas decorations from rece recycled materials, keeping the holiday spirit alive despite the devastation. Commuters catching the lit-up Christmas bus in the small city of Santo Andre in Brazil are finding out what Santa Claus is doing with his nights. Santo Andre is a city of about half a million inhabitants just over 20 kilometers south of major metropolis, Sao Paulo. Businesses in Bethlehem are hoping for a successful Christmas season as rising numbers of tourists visit the West Bank city after a lull of several years. Catalans, in the meantime, get into the Christmas spirit with poopers. The iconic figurine littered among garlands, lights and nativities as part of the region's holiday traditions. Now, news here at home. Sri Lanka's oldest political party, the Lanka Samasamaja Party, celebrated its 78th anniversary and 80th anniversary of the Suryamal movement. The party was formed in 1935. The Lanka Samasamaja Party was founded on 18 December 1935 with the broad aims of independence and socialism by a group of young people who had gathered together for that purpose. In 1933, the group got involved in the Suryamal movement, which was owned by volunteer work among the poor during the malaria epidemic of 1934 to 1935. Samasamaja Party activists N. M. Pereira, Colvin R. J. Silva, Leslie Gunavardana and Robert Gunavardana had given leadership to this campaign. The assistance of SWR Dibandar Naika and Philip Gunavardana was sought for this purpose. The Surya Mal movement had been formed to provide support for indigenous ex-servicemen by the sale of Surya flowers. 
The Suryamal movement surged as a reaction to the fact that at the time Poppy Day funds went solely to British ex-servicemen. The Lanka Samasamaja party was created in 1935 as a result of this campaign. This party has given its support to form several progressive governments since 1956. The Lanka Samasamaja party is a constituent party of the present People, United People's Freedom Alliance government. A special ceremony to commemorate the 78th anniversary of the Lanka Samasamaja party and 80th anniversary of the Suryamal movement was held in Avisavela yesterday. The ceremony began after paying floral tributes at the Samasamaja party leader N.M. Pereira's statue. SLFP General Secretary Minister Maitri Pala Sirisena, Lanka Samasamaja Party Leader, Senior Minister Thissa Vitharana, Senior Minister Dyuguna Sekara and Minister Ranjit Siyambalapitiya were present. In other local stories, Nirvani Kaushalya Kumari of Mahyangane has won the first place in the SLBC Three Wheel Star Singing Contest. P. Murali of Kirinochi was placed first runner-up while Lalit Prevalal of Matale was adjudged as second runner-up. Defence Secretary Gautabe Rajapaksha was the chief guest at the award ceremony held yesterday. The grand finale of SLBC Three Wheel Star Singing Competition was held in Nelupokuna Mind Rajapaksha Theatre yesterday under the directions of SLBC Chairman Hudson Samara Singha. Thirteen contestants were selected from 50,000 persons for the final round. A Bajaj Three Wheel and One Million Rupee Insurance Certificate was presented by Social Security Board to the winner of the contest. A Bajaj Pulsar motor motorcycle and a 50, 500,000 rupee insurance cover were presented to the first run up while a sum of 100,000 rupees and an insurance cover were presented to the second run up. In addition, these singers have been named as A grade singers of Broadcasting Corporation in the year 2013. A sum of 10,000 rupees each was presented to the other 10 finalists. Urvariye Nilmini of Mahyangane, who presented a song using the music of the indigenous people, received a special award from the panel of judges. Minister Wimal Virawansa, Presidential Secretary Dalit Virathunga, Army Commander Lieutenant General Dayarat Naik, and IGP NK Langakon were among the spectators. <laughs> Devanastania, Kirinochi, T. Murali. Palamunastania, Nirmani Kausalya. Neither my SLBC Tribal Star. Abhiman Ratriye, Kirula Paladina, Nirmani Kausalya. Welcome back. The UN mission in South Sudan has urged rival political leaders to agree to a truce and open negotiations. Clashes broke out between troops loyal to President Salva Kiir and others backing his former deputy a week ago. Earlier, the South Sudanese army confirmed that Ben Tiu, the capital of oil-rich United State, had also fallen to troops supporting former Vice President Rik Macha. President Salva Kiir has accused Macha of attempting a coup. The government says it is trying to retake Bor and the state has seen fierce fighting in recent days. The U.S. said it had evacuated its citizens from Bor. Four U.S. service personnel were wounded on Saturday when their aircraft was shot at, delaying an evacuation operation. Former Vice President on Saturday said that he was prepared to negotiate with the government if politicians arrested this week were released and transferred to a neutral country such as Ethiopia. Kerr also agreed to negotiations after meeting African mediators on Friday. The violence which broke out in Juba last weekend has since spread, pitting gangs of Nua and Dinka against each other. And that's it on the news tonight. Thank you for watching. Do join us again tomorrow night at the same time. Good night. Good night.